Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is a finally my review of Pyongkang Yule, a Korean brand that I had been interested in for quite some time. I thought that for today's video I would do this try-on style because this is actually a remarkably easy brand for me to explain to you. In fact, so easy that let's just go ahead and get the basics out of the way before I get into trying on the product. So this was developed, the brand was developed by the Pyongkang Oriental Medicine Clinic in Korea in the year 2016, so they're actually a much younger brand than I realized. I for some reason thought they were a, a bit more of an older brand. But yeah, they're a newer brand. The entire focus of this brand is on balancing the skin with as few ingredients as possible. So it's a very minimalist brand, which I think you can kind of pick up on from the packaging, from the boxes. It does look like a minimalist brand. What's so interesting to me about that approach is that that wasn't really the trendy thing to do in 2016. And I always really, I always really appreciate when I notice this about a brand because it means that they were doing it before it was the popular thing to do. Okay, give me the hat. So because of that incredibly straightforward approach, you're naturally going to have a lower risk for allergens, which I think is why I've noticed a lot of people with sensitive skin do seem to absolutely love this particular brand. But do take note that just because a brand is typically friendly towards sensitive skin, if you do have a lot of allergies, it's important to always check the ingredients list regardless. The brand is also pretty heavily based in Chinese medicine. This is where I got a little confused. This is not my area of expertise, if you will, but I'm going to try to condense this to the best of my understanding. So they have both a temperature down line and a temperature up line, and this is the whole principles of Chinese medicine. The temperature down line is supposed to reduce skin temperature to prevent water loss and calm angry skin. So therefore that line is for oily and sensitive skin types, whereas the temperature up line promotes circulation and therefore is the line for dry skin. What I did find confusing about this is I bought pretty much the entire moisture line. So for an example, I assumed moisture serum, moisture cream, that sounds like for dry skin types, like my own, right? But actually, no, the moisture serum is the temperature up line, so for dry skin, and the moisture cream is the temperature down line for oily skin. So it's a little bit confusing if you're new to the brand, but now I've realized it's not that hard to figure out which line you're talking about if you look at the inky. So for the temperature down line, the ingredient you're going to want to look for is Coptis japonica, whereas the temperature up line is milk veg. So we really boil down to two separate distinct ingredients that are the core of this brand and the core of these two lines. There also is an acne line and it may surprise you that I didn't go in that direction, but the reason I didn't I have discussed this a little bit on this channel. I prefer to go with Western actives because we can legally have higher percentages of ingredients like salicylic in the West. Absolutely love Korean skincare for pretty much everything else. So this is all to tell you that what I wanted to get from this brand was products to round out my actives. That's the idea behind everything that you see in today's video and everything you're going to watch me apply to my skin. So... Why did that just sound awkward? Applied to my skin, not just my face, but to my skin? Somebody should take all of the content creators out of context at some point and just make a compilation of beauty gurus saying things like, the skin, the skin, the feel on the skin. Okay, let's get into today's routine. It is early in the morning, so this is going to be an AM routine, which I kind of film more of these than PM routines, but that's just because I'm a morning person. Anyway, I do want to start with the peeling, peeling gel. I stumbled over my words, it's called the peeling gel. I have to clarify this because Foreo's out here with the serum serum, right? Anyway, the peeling gel contains nine ingredients and also includes betaine salicylate. So that's a much more gentle alternative to salicylic. This is just a really nice basic peeling gel. Probably the most straightforward ingredients list that I've ever seen in a peeling gel. Uh, I don't think I'll repurchase this, at least not immediately. I do like it, uh, but I do still have one peeling gel from Primera, and I don't know, I'm not drawn as much to this type of product, even though I really, I respect it for what it is. 
So you see how as I'm massaging this into my skin, these little balls are forming on my skin? People in the US often get a bit confused. We have a bit of a telephone game with this type of product where uh, it's perceived to be dead skin, but it's not quite dead skin. Instead, what's happening is the carbomer in this reacts with the oil in your skin and forms those little balls. And those act as a very gentle physical exfoliator. So referencing this for sensitive skin, this is a really, really great way to give yourself a gentle physical scrub, get some physical exfoliation in without using, you know, the St. Ives scrub, but there's also much more gentler options on the market. And I do prefer to use a, a gentler physical scrub every so often. <laughs> I would advise you to do this over the sink since I now have quite a cleanup for myself over here. <laughs> and Pune Kang Yul says you can do that either before or after cleansing, so I'm going to follow with my Rovectin Marine Micellar Deep Cleansing Water because this is the next trial for this channel. I think it'll be a really interesting comparison doing these two brands back to back because both of them kind of cater towards more sensitive skin types. Both of them are fragrance free, mostly essential oil free. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're a very different approach. The ingredients lists on Rovectin products are a lot longer. I'm so sorry, my hair was sticking out too much for it to be that dirty. Uh, you all know the rules for hair, right? Bleach dirty, dye clean, I gotta bleach it. An entire year of box bleach in my hair, I don't think it's necessarily in the best health, but uh, I'm getting through it. I'm using the Essence Toner next, which is probably their most popular product. I do see why, it's a good viscous enough texture that you don't need to use a cotton pad. It's probably still dripping down my hand because it is, it's a little drippy, but not too bad, it definitely can be used just by patting it into your skin. And also, since the ingredients list is so basic on this, you can use this for the seven step method. I try to do the seven step method. I do like it. It really does make your skin look incredibly plump and glowy. But to be honest with you, I'd say I typically do the three step method, the four step method, and then I just kind of get tired. But it really does work so well for that. I also, I originally had this in the sheet mask form, but I don't think I'll buy that again. I'll just stick with this and pour it over my uh, DIY sheet masks. I always forget what those are called, but I showed those in my uh, Foreo UFO video. I have quite a supply of those and I did dump this into those. Works really well. Yeah, I guess I would say it's a very uh, flexible essence toner and it's flexible enough that you could use this before another essence or after a toner or before a toner. It's just very, it very easily fits into your routine. This would be in the temperature upline technically. The first ingredient here is the Astragalus membranaceus root extract, which is milk vetch. I did find some very interesting studies on that milk vetch ingredient. Apparently it has a history of being used in Chinese medicine, but there has been a decent amount of research on it in aspects such as wound healing, uh, reversing UVA damage, helping with even hyperpigmentation. And for the record, I actually bought a smaller size of this. This is the 6.8 fluid ounce size. It kind of looks like a small bottle, but 6.8 fluid ounces is a huge essence. That is gigantic. Most of mine are, what, about five ounces? So it's interesting the impact of the packaging on our perception. I do keep seeing this in my own head as a smaller essence. I've even thought things like, oh, I'm gonna go through this more quickly. No, I'm not. Let's apply the moisture serum next, which again is for dry skin. Uh, I will add, just so you all know, since I do use a lot of actives, I've been layering this over my actives. And actually, I love it. This is that same milky consistency uh, that the I'm From Rice toner has. It's funny because that one didn't end up becoming an absolute favorite for me. And I think the, the simple reason for that is because I need those actives before toner. So this is actually much more suited to my routine. The only catch with this, and I don't know if anybody's talked about this in doing a review on this product, but it is pretty high in olive oil. Uh, it's fine for my skin, but some people do reference that olive oil has a fairly high rating on the comedogenesis scale. 
I talk about that only occasionally on this channel because it's fairly useless for me. Uh, coconut oil is another ingredient that's really high on the comedogenesy scale, but it works out just fine for me. Again, that scale was conducted using rabbit ears, so it is possible that that scale could work really well for you, but it's just pretty useless for me, actually. And let us not forget that that ingredient works for J.Lo. So if you really want to get J.Lo skincare, just go buy yourself a bottle of olive oil. Then we have the moisture ampoule. I'm not going to be using this today. Instead, I'll reference you my PM routine where I use this as a sleeping pack. This is so perfect for that use in spite of being called an ampoule. It's just such a thick, viscous texture that just seals in all of your skincare. It's really beautiful. And this one is the temperature down line. So it is, I believe, 90% of this Coptis Japonica root extract. Since that is the other main player in the Pyeongkang Yule brand, let me really briefly talk about that ingredient. So I've seen a few people say they didn't find a lot of research around that ingredient, and that's true. You won't find a lot of research on the full plant, but instead look up the alkaloid of that plant, which is berberine. There is some very interesting research around that specific alkaloid, including its anti-inflammatory properties, antimicrobial effects, even its activity against acne. Anyway, I'm going to be moving into the eye cream. I want to just show you how this system works real quickly. So you get a tin here and inside you get 50 packs of individually wrapped eye cream. The idea behind this is they want this to be a much more hygienic system. The only aspect of this that I don't actually like is you're supposed to use one of these packs per day, morning and evening. That's all good in theory, but what do I do with the rest of it? What am I supposed to do with it? This one would have to be the dry skin line also, as it is based in milk vetch. That's the first ingredient here. And then petrolatum. This one actually has quite a long ingredients list compared to the rest of their products. So shea butter, hyaluronic acid, bergamot oil, which is why I didn't open this video saying this brand is essential oil free. I uh, have noticed that that's in a couple of their products. Licorice, fermented ginseng. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a nice ingredients list, but that's why I'm saying you, you just can't get too comfortable with skincare. You always have to check the ingredients if you're somebody who's prone to allergies. Now for me, bergamot, if I use it on my face, I will experience breakouts. I thought it would be fine in an eye cream because I don't break out around my eyes, but I have to admit my skin has been a little bit more dry around my eyes. I feel like that's a perfect conversation on mild allergies. I do have much more mild allergies to this, but if I use a, an ingredient that I have a mild allergy to where I'm prone to breaking out, I'm probably going to see more of those effects. So realistically, I think I'm just going to pass this along to a friend who doesn't have any sensitivities to bergamot, but Overall, it's nice. Just again, you know, watch out for those ingredients. Last category for this video is moisturizer. I feel like this is the most confusing category from Pyeongkang Yule, but I've got it figured out. So hopefully pay attention to this section if you're a little confused as to what to purchase. So I purchased the moisture cream. It's a huge jar, 3.3 fluid ounces, but this turns out to be the line for oily combination or sensitive skin. I try to reiterate this a lot because I think this is a, a very important detail of skincare. If you're going through your moisturizer too quickly, if you can finish off an entire, you know, standard 1.7 ounce size of moisturizer in a month, it's not the right moisturizer for your skin type. So yeah, I've actually used kind of a lot of this for a, how long was this trial? Three weeks? But I'll admit to you, it is actually a really nice quite lightweight moisturizer. You're going to see this disappear right into my skin. And again, again, we have a basis of Coptis Japonica here too, the antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory ingredient. And then we also have some, we have some shea butter in this, which really surprised me, but it is actually quite lightweight. Usually shea butter based products are not lightweight, nor do they usually appear in products that are for oily and combination skin. The balancing gel, you would think, if you're an American like I am, you would think this is for combination to oily skin. Gels are typically for that skin type here. But not in this case, this is absolutely, absolutely much more for dry skin. It has an almost honey-like texture to it, very similar to the moisture ampoule, a little bit, maybe a little bit less sticky. 
It's tricky because you absolutely have to tap this into your skin, but if you do, again, you've got this incredible occlusive layer. You see why this was so confusing to me, right? So in the US, balancing products are almost always for oily skin. We have this tendency to think here, oh, if you have too much oil production, you need to balance your skin. Whereas Pyung Kang Yul's entire line is about balancing. So with the balancing gel, they're trying to help you balance out dryness with this incredibly occlusive layer. Can you see how shiny that is compared to the moisture side? I talked about the intensive ceramide lotion in my best affordable products video. Again, I, I don't know why more people don't talk about this. This is by far the best value. And in some ways, maybe it's even hmm, subjectively at the best ingredients list. Fragrance-free, no essential oils, five forms of hyaluronic acid, sunflower oil, macadamia oil, shea butter. The one thing I would comment on with using this on your face is that if your face isn't uh, highly moisturized before, you apply this lotion, you may have a little bit of trouble buffing it in. So even if you do use it as a body lotion, you're going to want to use it on damp skin right out of the shower. Hyaluronic acid can get a little, it can get a little grumpy if it doesn't have enough moisture. But it's interesting because it's such a, a lightweight finish with all of those ingredients in it. I really do not, I do not know why more people aren't saying this is one of the best affordable options on the market. 16.9 fluid ounces. So hopefully you can see the the difference in all of these, I would say uh, more for oily combo skin, dry skin, and then really any skin type. I'm not entirely sure I got the center of my face here, so let's finish off the, my personal favorite, the balancing gel. Add that to the rest of my face. This is my morning routine, so of course I do have to finish this off with sunscreen. I don't have the Pyung Kang Yule version, so I'm going to be applying this to the high points of my face. And then I'm going to apply it to the rest of my face because I have a brain and I know how to use it. My mom warned me about that when I was a child. She always said to me, you know, Alice, you will find in life that some people have more money than brains. And that is it. That is my review of the Pyongkang Yule brand. Let me know if you've tried any of these products by leaving a comment in the section below or let me know if you've tried any of the other products as this is by no means the entire line. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did find this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.